Hey everyone, Dr. here. Welcome to another TEAS lesson on the comparison between TEAS 6, the current version, and TEAS 7, which starts in early June. All right, today we're going to look at the nervous system. If you recall, this lesson is previously part of the neuromuscular system. So in TEAS 6, the two systems, nervous system and the muscular systems are combined into this neuromuscular system. But I didn't think it was a very good arrangement because each system has a lot of important information. So I'm glad to see that in TEAS 7, this old chapter uh, has been broken down to the two separate body systems. So that's really great. And today we're going to focus on the nervous system. All right, so here is a table to compare the, the two T's versions for the nervous system. And so the titles are over here. So you can see uh, that's pretty straightforward. And then the learning objectives. Now, the new learning objectives are all going to be new. And that's expected, right? Because this is a, you know, almost a new chapter. So first, you need to distinguish between the central and peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system is often written as CNS, and the peripheral nervous system is written as PNS. So throughout this lecture, if you see CNS and PNS, you know what they stand for. And second, we will go through the, the different structures of a neuron. And last, explain the functions of the nervous system. So we'll definitely go over um, all the details. You can see on this slide, I said there is not too much change to the nervous system. And that's kind of compared to my previous lecture on the nervous system. Even with the new chapter on nervous system in T7, I think my old lecture uh, basically covered uh, most of the important things for the nervous system. I think the only thing that I didn't mention is the, the structure of a neuron, which we will cover in today's lecture. Today, uh, I will point out a few important things, kind of give you a little bit of a refresher. Okay, the first step is sensory input. So this is where your sensory receptors, for example, you have sensory receptors in your skin. You also have uh, sensory receptors in some of your hollow organs. Right, so those receptors can monitor changes called the stimuli that come from the external environment or internal environment. And these sensory receptors can generate nerve impulses right, based on um, the internal and external changes. And those nerve impulses will be carried towards your central nervous system. Right? So these are the F uh, afferent information going into the central nervous system to be processed. Okay. So this first step is known as sensory input. And this really um, kind of gives you that sensation, right? So for example, let's say there is a bug that lands on your hand, right? And then you, your skin can feel that little kind of uh, pressure on the skin and they can generate the uh, nerve impulses and the nerve impulses are sent to your nervous system. So this step usually, uh, again, generates that sensation, right? The, 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 the feel, like you feel something is on your skin. And then the second step is integration. So once the afferent information reaches the central nervous system, there are neurons that will be processed the information, right? And then they will make a decision as to what action is needed. Okay, so the decision might be, okay, if it's a mosquito, we want to kill the mosquito, right? Okay, so that's the second step. And then the third, also the last step, is motor output. So once the decision is made, the central nervous system is going to send the decision, which is in the form of nerve impulses, right? So those nerve impulses will be carried to an E-factor organ to generate a response. So in the case of a mosquito, the central nervous system, the brain is probably going to tell the uh, muscles, right, to contract, to move the hand and try to slap on the mosquito. And that process is called a motor output, also known as efferent. So you can use this trick to remember the difference between afferent and efferent. E stands for exit, right? So that's the information leaving the central nervous system 
and going into an e-factor organ. Could be skeletal muscle, could be a gland. Okay? So that's motor output. And again, it generates a response. For example, you move your hand, you move your arm, or um, your sweat gland secretes sweat. Okay? So that's the three um, steps in terms of the function of the nervous system. Receive sensory information, process that information and make a decision and send that decision um, into an e-factor organ to generate an action or a response. So this is just more information on what we have just discovered. And I just wanna give you a little bit more details so that you have everything uh, in this video. Uh, so the sensory division, again, that sends information to the nervous system, right? So the nerve fibers will carry information toward the nervous system. And you may have different types of sensory fibers or also known as nerves, somatic. These sensory fibers carry information from the skin, muscles, skeletal muscles, and joints to the central nervous system. Visceral, those fibers carry information from visceral organs to the central nervous system. Okay. So usually these will receive external stimuli normally, and these will receive internal stimuli, right? Things that happen inside your body. So for example, if you uh, have a pain in your stomach, that sensation is stimulated by an internal stimuli. And then the motor division, I always associate motor with the output, right? Uh, with a response or a result. So the motor division is also known as the efferent division, right? Because the information is leaving the central nervous system to a muscle or a gland. So the nerve fibers will carry impulses away from the CNS going into an effector organ. So on the next slide, you will see a practice question and you will have 20 seconds to answer that question. All right, let's get started. All right, which of the following parts of the nervous system carries the nerve impulses toward the brain? So that means this is sensory input, right? Going into the CNS. So the correct answer is going to be A, the sensory division. So the muscles or glands are effector organs that are part of the motor division, right? That's the um, parts of your body that generate that response, generate that outcome based on the decision. Uh, this, the integration center that refers to CNS, so the brain, the spinal cord, they process the, the information input, right? And then they make a decision and then they tell the motor division what to do. Okay. All right. Um, the next topic is about CNS versus PNS. I found this picture from the Oregon State Open uh, textbook for anatomy physiology. I really like their textbook. I think it's better than the open stacks textbook. So I would recommend this one. And plus it's also free, so it doesn't cost you any money. Uh, this is an image from their free textbook. And you can see the structures uh, of the uh, nervous system are in two different colors. So the purple color indicates this is a CNS and yellow is a PNS. So basically in CNS, you just have two structures, the brain and the spinal cord, okay? And everything beyond the brain and the spinal cord is part of the PNS. So those are nerves, right, going into different parts of the body and also sensory organs, the sensory structures uh, at the end of the nerves, right? For example, you have a sensory receptors in your skin, sensory receptors in your, in your tongue, right? In your ear. So those sensory receptors are also part of the PNS. Okay, so here is a table that I made to help you compare the CNS and PNS. CNS is the the master control that regulates all the body systems, right? They make decisions and they tell different parts of the body what to do. And the PNS is really uh, kind of the link, right? Between CNS and the outside world because the PNS has all the nerves and the sensory structures 
that can receive the stimuli from the environment and then translate that stimuli into nerve, electrical nerve impulses and carry those nerve impulses to the brain, right? So basically they can sense what's going on in the environment and then tell CNS what's happening, right? So that's the job for PNS. And like I said earlier, PNS consists of mostly nerves, right? So there are cranial nerves that extend from the brain. And we also have spinal nerves that extend from the spinal cord. So these nerves can be part of the afferent division or efferent division. So afferent, that means sensory input, right? Input and efferent, that's motor output. Now, some nerves can do both. They can be part of the sensory input, right, to generate a sensation. They can also carry information out to an effector organ to generate that motor response. Okay. Now, in terms of a specific function, CNS does, these, does this integration, right, process information uh, and, you know, issue a command. Um, yeah, and then this really kind of covers the, the, the other bullet points. And PNS communication lines between the sensory organs and the brain and spinal cord and glands of glands or muscles, right? The E-factor organ. Okay, practice question. Which of the following divisions of the nervous system include the nerves in the skin to sense external temperature? And this is a multiple, res multiple response question. So to sense external temperature, that means it's a sensation, right? It's a sensory input. First of all, it's going to be PNS, because remember the PNS nerves are the communication lines, right? They connect the CNS to the outside world. So they can sense what the changes are and then they send the information to CNS. And what about C and D? Information input, right? Information going into CNS. So that's going to be A ferrant. Remember E is exit, right? So that's information output. So correct answer is B and C. Okay, second question. Okay, when impaired, for example, under the influence of alcohol, which of the following structures of the CNS leads to loss of motor control? The correct answer is cerebellum, because cerebellum is responsible for motor control, balance, and balance. Now, I want to uh, stress that just based on what's in T7 study manual, it does not look like that they will have any questions on the specific parts of the brain. So for example, like functions of cerebrum or cerebellum or brainstem. So I think this is possibly not going to be in T7. So I would put this type of question as a very, very low priority. So if you don't have time, then do not study the different parts of the brain because I think it's less likely for them to be on T7. Okay. 